right, friends. So today we're going to be using watercolor paint and crayons to finish our Luna Moth drawing. This is a technique when you use them in combination, it's called wax resist. That's because the wax in the crayon resists the water in the paint. And that way you get to have both things on the same paper, but where the crayon is, the paint will not be. And where the paint is, the crayon will not be. So it's kind of a neat way to create something and have a little fun with some supplies and, and, and a, perhaps a new way for you. You can do wax resist also with colored pencils because they're waxy. You can do wax resist also with oil pastel. They're not waxy, but they're oily and oil also resists water. So those are some other options. If you haven't tried them, I recommend trying it all guys. I say that every time, but I just want you to know that you can draw these things over and over again. Now guys, if you were in my class, you know we drew this this uh, we drew this drawing this week. Um, if you are not in my class, if you'd like to learn more about it, you are welcome to try it out. So uh, I offer students a chance to come in and just pay for one class and try it out. If you don't like it, it's okay, no problem. If you do like it, you get to stay and continue for the rest of the session. So every session offers all new art lessons and we draw animals, people, buildings, insects, uh, storybook characters from books, movies, cartoons, video games, mythical, magical creatures. I mean, all kinds of things, guys. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more and you haven't signed up yet, please consider checking out artshub.com and uh, learning more about how you can sign up for one class to try it out. But if you are a current student and you are ready to get started, I know I am. And friends, if you want one of these Arts Hub magnets, they are great. They hold up your artwork on the refrigerator and uh, you get them by liking and sharing these videos and by letting me know either in class or by email. If you want an Arts Hub magnet, you know what to do, guys. Thank you for your assistance and for your continued support. All right, so this is the time that we start with the crayons. So first, let's talk about the supplies. I have a bunch of crayons here. I have the multicultural crayons. I have colored crayons. I have neon crayons. I have different brands of crayons. It's like a poem over here. So you can use whatever supplies you have. Uh, multicultural crayons are great for skin tones. They're also good in this case for like the tree branch and things like that. Um, this is uh, it doesn't have a label on it anymore, but this is Crayola uh, watercolor paint. Crayola has really rich colors. There are many types of watercolor paint. Crayola is, a, is one that I recommend for kids. It comes with its built-in mixing tray. For today's lesson, you're going to need a large paintbrush. And so sometimes we need a small one. Sometimes we need a medium one. Today, uh, I will explain this more later, but this is a nice large one. When I say large, it's about an inch, right? It's not super big, but it's also real soft and flexible. You can see I've used this one before. You're going to need some paper towels and you're going to need a cup of water. Um, but first things first, we're going to start with these crayons. And so let's look at a photograph real quick. So a Luna Moth is native to North America. If you've been in the class, you recognize this from, you know, what we talked about. Um, what's cool is they're about the size of a phone. So, uh, so this is about four and a half to five inches across here, which is about that big. That's pretty big for a moth, actually. And there's a lot of really cool fun facts about this particular moth. But as you can see, they're green. They have sort of a purplish red. Um, decoration on them. This is what nature gave them, guys. They're just really, really cool. They're really pretty. So we're going to, um, I'm going to keep that handy as a reference nearby, and I'm going to get out some of my colors. And so I know that I need shades of green, right? So I'm going to do that. And so this is a good practice, guys. We did this with the markers before. I'm doing it now with my um, crayons. And I'm just going to go through and say, what colors do I need? What colors do I want? And I think that's a good start. I'm also going to get some yellows. I'm going to get some sort of burgundy and some reds. Um, I think that's going to be a good start for me. So, yeah, I think I'm ready to start. Okay, so I'm going to start with these guys. I'm not going to do this whole thing uh in real time, meaning slowly, I'm going to get started and then I'm going to go into time lapse. The time lapse goes by really fast. It just makes the video a little bit more fun to watch. You can always start and stop this video at any time if you need more time to complete a step. 
But I've got my greens ready, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back these up a little bit just to make sure we have plenty of room. And I know that this moth, you see where the wings overlap? They're so transparent where they overlap. See how it's darker green right in there? So this is like a darker green area for me too. And so what I want to do is I don't want to uh, push too hard with this. What's really fun about watercolor, cram, watercolor paint and crayon is that you don't have to color every single nook and cranny because the paint is going to fill in some of those spaces. And so it's not really an invitation to scribble. It's not. But it is kind of an invitation to let some of the white paper show. And so if you know about other classes we do, we might say, oh, try your best to cover your paper. And that is almost always true, guys, almost always. But in watercolor paint and crayon resist, it is great to let some of that paper show through. You'll see why later. If you don't already know, you'll see why later. So I really like that, but it's not quite the kind of green I'm looking for. So I'm going to add a little of this. Now, this is a little special because this is a neon green, but it's called Glitter Laser Lemon. And so that I think is self-explanatory, but it's got glitter in it, guys. So if you want to add a little more pizzazz to your Luna Moth drawing, you can get some glitter crayons. This one is also Glitter Screaming Green. So that's kind of an interesting idea. So I'm going to add some of this. You see, I've already been working with my different shades of green. And um, I'm going to look at my reference again. You see how the body's kind of white? So I'm going to leave that body the way it is, and I'm going to add my green here. So I'm going to go into time lapse in just a moment. I want to mention, do you see these lines on the wings? Notice that I'm, I'm trying to color in the direction of those lines. So that's going to help a lot. So try your best to keep going in the direction. See how I'm going in the direction of those lines? I'm going to do that just to show you what I mean. So I'm not scribbling but I'm going in the direction of those lines. And I'm gonna do that again here, and I'm gonna do it again each time. All right, guys, I'm gonna go into time-lapse, and uh, I will see you on the other side. Here we go. guys so as you can see I have colored in everything except the sky and that is something that is very important with this so I use different shades of brown on my tree branch I use different shades of green on my leaf than I used on my moth that's another great reason to have all of these different crayons so that you have a lot of options guys I've got Crayola crayons crazy art crayons neon crayons uh you know, colors of the world crayons. I mean, I've got a lot in there, so it's really great to have multiple options. Also guys, um, it's now time to do the watercolor paint. So I just wanted to show you, this part does not take very long, but as you open up your tray, I want you to notice that a couple of things. First of all, have another paper towel handy. This is a mixing tray. A lot of my students don't know what that means. They have no idea. No one ever told them that. So I'm here to tell you guys, this piece of plastic is a lid. And Crayola was smart. It's also a mixing tray. It's got little sections on it so you can separate different colors. So get your brush wet and think about the color you want to have for your background. Now, it doesn't need to be a complicated background. Is It can be simple. It, you can make it any color you want. But for example, I'm going to make mine kind of a purplish blue today. So what I want to do is I want to get my water and I want to start soaking my purple. And so that is important. Sometimes people just think, well, I just need to get my brush in there and get it wet and I'm going to go to town. What's well, more than that, guys? This is the brush is a tool. The paint is a material and you're going to use both to make it work for you. All right. So we've got some paint in the mixing tray. See how I did that? I'm also going to put a little bit of water. I'm going to rinse my brush out, put a little bit of water in my blue. Now I rinsed my brush out in between. Even though I'm going to mix these colors, I want the blue in the tray to stay pretty clean. So I'm going to let the water sink in just a second. Stir it around a little bit. I'm getting more and more pigment into my water. 
Then I'm going to put the blue here. They're separated on the mixing tray by this little plastic ridge. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out again. So what I have here, guys, is a clean blue and a clean purple, and I have blue and purple side by side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the blue, I'm going to put it in the purple, I'm going to take the purple, put it in the blue, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix those two together, and I'm going to get a bluish purple. Now, if you want it to be more purple, guess what you do? Yep, you add more purple. If you want it to be more blue, add more blue. But once you have sort of a pretty good puddle, I want mine to be more purple, pretty good puddle, puddle of paint, purple paint. That's like a poem, a puddle of purple paint. This is the part where a lot of people are confused, okay? Don't be confused. You got lots of paint on your brush. You're going to start right here in the top corner. All right. Watch what I'm going to do. Look, guys, I'm going right over the top of everything. And where the crayon is, the paint is resisted, meaning it doesn't sink into the paper. Where the paint goes onto the paper, there's no crayon that it sinks in. And where there's crayon, it doesn't go in. So sometimes you got to mix up more paint as you go along, and that's fine. If you want to mix them up, that's totally your call. It is your paint tray. I just wanted you to know you can keep it clean if you want to. You can change it as you go along. It doesn't have to stay the exact same color. Look how great that looks, guys. This is so cool. This is one of my favorite techniques. This is something that I think a lot of people are confused about. Do not paint around. You're not going around your butterfly. You're not going around your branch. Go right over the top. And notice I'm trying my best here to keep my brush strokes horizontal. I think it helps. That's why we have this kind of big flat brush. You can add more paint directly to your brush if you want to make it more intense in color. See how that became much more intense? You can just do layer on layer on layer on layer on layer. Not to say the word layer too many times, but how about a few more layers, right? That's right. So layer, layer, layer. This is like my own song, my own poem, but it looks awesome. It really does look awesome. I'm, I'm loving it. So, all right, friends, rinse your brush out, set it aside, check out your work of art. Take a paper towel, a clean one, start soaking up that extra water. Guys, this is going to look spectacular. I love it. There it is, friends. Look how great that looks. You may have noticed me testing my colors on the back. I should have had some testing paper nearby. Absolutely. I often say that. I didn't do it today, but in a tight pinch, do it on the back. Never test your colors on the front, guys. Check out how beautiful that looks. And you can see that where I use the glitter crayons, maybe you can see some of that glitter. I can see it from here. That's it for today, friends. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. I will just have to see you next time. Bye-bye.